have a quick break right here. When the subject first comes in, we explain to them that we're going to clean some spots and put some electrodes on in order to measure the electrical activity of their brain. Um, and then we bring them into this room here. So we have them come into this room, they put this helmet on, um, and we have a bunch of um, sort of hardware on it that holds the sources and detectors into place. Um, and so what we're doing is we're shining near-infrared light, which is a really low-level light, um, through these fiber optic cables and we're just putting them, we're just using this helmet to hold them into place and they just sit on the scalp. Um, so we've got this, they're just sort of blunt tipped on the end and we put them into the holes and they just sit on the person's scalp like that during the experiment and just shine a really low level of light into their um, head and brain. Then we pick the lights up with these bigger fibers, these detectors, um, and they go into these bigger holes here. And the same thing, they just sit on the, on the scalp um, we do use a little tool to move the hair out of the way because the whole hair can absorb the light. They've done a lot of studies in, um, in, in cells and know that when um, neurons are active, they swell and become more transparent. And so the light actually goes deeper when the cells are active. And then we'll get ready to start, okay? Okay. All right. Light, it, it goes down really only about a centimeter into the brain, so we're just sort of measuring the activity on the very outside of the brain. And then we're picking up this light again with these detectors. Um, and whether the brain is active or not, we can tell by how fast it takes the light to go from the light source to the light detector. So what's on this? It may look a little bit scary because we do have this whole helmet covered with um, the light sources that are thin and the detectors that are thicker, um, but really they're just sitting on the scalp and the subject's wearing the helmet and doing the task. They can move around normally and um, it's not painful or anything. And you actually get less light this way than you would if you were, say, standing outside on a sunny day. So it's a really low level of light. People seem to do pretty well with it. Maybe it's partly because they can't see themselves once they're all set up, unless we take a picture of them. But uh, yeah, most people are, are usually pretty fine with it. It's not intimidating to me to have to uh, have the, the electrodes uh, attached and, uh, and the uh, other types of devices and the spots cleaned and, cl and things glued to you, sensors glued to you. That's not really a problem. It, it doesn't hurt in any way, and it's, it's, just, it, it's just part of what it takes to be a part of the study. So it's, it's, uh, it's just an interesting process that you have to go through to be a part of the study. The graphs on the screen will actually show us sort of how much light we're getting from each of the detectors so we can um, adjust them to the right level. So with some people we are getting too much light and we're sort of um, overexposing our equipment and so we have to turn it down and so we can sort of adjust the level of light. Um, older adults are actually better to run in that respect because they have less hair and lighter colored hair often um, and we get better light signals from older adults than we do from younger. So it's, we like running older adults better. <laughs> These are our optical machines right here, um, and actually they have both the light sources and the light detectors in them. Um, we have a lot of them, so we can record from pretty much the whole head at the same time. Um, these, these smaller ones down here are actually the light sources, so each one of these is a laser diode, so it emits a little um, red light, sort of like a laser pointer, um, and then it goes into these fiber optic cables. So if you've seen like one of those fiber optic Christmas trees, um, these are pretty much the same sorts of cables, just sort of a higher tech version of that. These bigger black cables are the detectors, so there are a whole bunch of those little ones bunched together, and what they're doing is carrying the low levels of light back from your scalp back into the machine. Um, and so the end of them is a little bit bigger, but it's really just a bunch of those cables bundled together. And they also just sit right on the scalp, um, and we can pick up the light from your brain and your head. Um, and then it carries it back into the machine where it's then processed. And from that, we can pretty much cover the entire outside of the brain and figure out where and when activity is happening. When you go into an MRI and you're actually measuring the brain activity, you're measuring the blood flow, and it takes several seconds for that to happen. We know that the brain is active much faster than several seconds. Things happen within milliseconds, and um, you can't really measure that with MRI. And so this technique actually, um, we can get both good millisecond time resolution, but we can also know where things are happening. We're actually measuring the activity of the cells of the brain, the neurons, um, pretty quickly, and so we can get a pretty good time resolution so we can tell when something is happening and where it's happening.